know, this diesel fuel injector bench mount tester is one of our mainstay products. I think we first developed this about 13 years ago and we've sold thousands of them. Can you imagine how much work it's been to build thousands of these things? They're highly modified. There's a lot of operations that have to go into them, both welding and machining and tapping and grinding. But recently we had a little bit of problem and you'll notice they've changed color. Uh, some of these manufacturers have gone through some pains with their bottle jacks and the inferior quality of some of them coming out of China has just driven us nuts, absolutely nuts. And we've had to change the manufacturer and we actually now have to make more modifications internally to get this thing to hold pressure. They, they tend to hold pressure much better now and they tend to pump up quite strongly before they release. And if you followed my videos, you know over the last few years, I've taken this tester to another level by getting it to be able to also test fuel injectors from gasoline cars. So if you're interested in this, you don't know that much about it. I'll put some links in the show more part of the description below this video. So I'm sitting here today getting ready to explain some of the new recommendations that we're going to include when people buy this tester right here that'll allow you to test the old mechanical diesel fuel injectors. It'll allow you to check the MFI or mechanical fuel injectors from the mid 60s to the early 70s. And then it also will allow you to test and clean the CIS fuel injectors. Over the past couple years, I've been seeing a lot more of this style of pressure tester being offered for sale. So I thought I would get one and kind of check it out. You know, the price is very attractive. The first thing I noticed when I got it is the base is made out of plastic. That's not to say that's bad. But one of the things I found, I found this a number of years ago when, we, when I developed my own pressure tester because I had purchased one similar to this, that it has this valving assembly that you have to adjust properly and mess around with to get the pressure to spray through the injector and also to test to see if the injector is holding pressure. Well, sure enough, I got this one and started messing around with it. It's kind of temperamental. I was really surprised at how temperamental this thing was. And it, finally, I could not get it to work properly. And when I took this apart, I realized the shaft and the O-rings were torn up in here uh, because of inadequate machining. So I think the intent's okay here, but once again, quality control is an issue. So I'm back to preferring my style of pressure tester, which is much more simple to operate than the one you see here. The other problem is the gauge. You look, it's this big gauge right here, but you're trying to get 18, 1900 PSI right down in this range. Who needs 8,000 PSI here? And you can't really see the you know, the lines are too close together to really get accurate readings. So I prefer a liquid filled gauge with only 3000 PSI, which gives you more lines for more accurate readings. And the liquid filled gauges are much more accurate than the ones you see here. Since I built and sold my first bench mount fuel injection pressure tester about 13 years ago, it's gone through a number of changes. And most recently, We've done some major modifications inside the pump to deliver better performance. We were having problems about six months ago with the reliability of some of these pumps and it was getting so bad we had to actually stop production for a couple of months, but we're really happy with what we have now. And of course it's obvious the color is different. We've also moved on to a more reliable gauge. This is a liquid filled gauge. It's very easy to read and it's very reliable much more reliable than the original gauge. The other thing we've done is come up with a way to capture the fumes. And this is really important. I know we don't sell the capture tank with the tester, but I highly recommend that you get this because it will allow you to test your fuel injectors in the shop and take this hose and bend it out the window. If you don't have this, I recommend you do this outside. Always wear a respirator, even when you're using the capture tank here. But don't forget to tighten this first before you start pumping or you may never get any pressure buildup. So we'll make sure this is tight. Now we're going to go ahead and pump this up. Here it comes. Now watch the spray pattern. Coming up to 1500. Look at that. We've got it at 1650. And look at how nicely that spray. 
And notice I'm standing here without a respirator on, and can you see the fluid being captured in that bottle? And of course, I'm not going to pump anymore because eventually the fumes will start coming out of this hose. So if you're doing this, get close to a window and run this 10-foot hose out the window, and you can go ahead and test most of your fuel injectors inside the shop. Once again, go ahead and use a respirator. We're talking a good quality respirator, not a dust mask, okay? You want a good quality paint respirator. So here you have a good view of our revised pump. Notice how it's holding pressure. <laughs> we want you to be very careful about filtering your fuel, using transmission fluid to keep it lubricated, and also attaching the line correctly and using the capture bottle. If you don't want to get my capture bottle, I think you could probably make one, all right? You can kind of see how we've done this. You could probably bring up something yourself, but please, and I'm gonna repeat, please do not breathe the fumes that come out of the spray patterns on these fuel injectors, whether you're testing diesel fuel injectors, MFI fuel injectors, or CF fuel injectors. If you take care of the pump, the pump's gonna take care of you.